Hello and welcome to Peopling the Past. My name is Anne Austin and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. I'm excited to talk to you about my research today, but before I get started, I wanted to make sure you know that this is going to include images and discussion of human remains. So what topic am I going to speak about today? Well, my research focuses on studying ancient Egyptian tattoos. I study bioarchaeology or the study of human remains from archaeological contexts. And in my work, I've identified several mummified women with tattoos on their body. This research includes photographing them in infrared to make it more visible where the tattoos are present, like you can see in the image on the right, where the tattoos are almost completely invisible on this woman's back, but suddenly pop out when you look at them in infrared. Some of the tattoos I'm able to observe just directly, like the images of these tattoos on the woman's neck on the left. What's fascinating about this, however, is the fact that for most of our history as Egyptologists, we assume that the people of ancient Egypt didn't tattoo themselves. The tattoos that I've identified on human remains have been some of the only tattoos that we found physically evidenced in ancient Egypt. So what sources or kinds of data do I look at? Well, in addition to looking at human remains or evidence of tattoos, I also look for evidence of tattoos and other kinds of material culture from Egypt. For example, we can see tattoos on the thighs of a woman from a painting inside a home at the site of Daryl Medina where I work. Now this place, Daryl Medina, is a special place in Egypt. It's the village of the men who decorated the tombs during the New Kingdom period, or from 1550 to 1070 BCE. The village is occupied by the men and their families, and it's actually the village you can see in the background of my photo. From this village, we not only get evidence like the paintings that you've seen, but also ostraca, like the one in the bottom of this image. Ostraca are pieces of pottery or sometimes stone that are reused for writing or drawing. And in the image you can see in the bottom, we see a drawing of a woman placed on one of these ostraca. You, in this case, the woman doesn't bear any tattoos, but interestingly, we have almost the exact same drawing on an ostracon that shows a woman with tattoos on her thighs. So in addition to looking for evidence of tattoos, it's almost just as important to look for where they're missing. And by bridging those data sets, we can better understand who did or didn't receive tattoos in ancient Egypt. For example, all of the evidence that I get from the site of Daryl Medina shows that tattooing was exclusively done on women during, Egypt, during this time in Egypt. So how can this topic tell us about real people in the past? Well, one of the things that's so important to me when I work on human remains is that I need to humanize them to better understand who they were as people in the past and to share that with all of you. So I'd like to talk about this woman in particular as an example. She has over 30 tattoos found along her neck, arms, and lower back. Some of the tattoos we saw earlier in this talk on the neck are the same tattoos that she has. This woman was somebody who lived in this village of Daryl Medina. She died in a kind of relatively normal adult age from what I can tell from her bones. But what's interesting is looking at the types of images she has permanently and publicly placed on her body. For example, she has many tattoos that relate to the goddess Hathor one of the most important goddesses in ancient Egypt. Hathor was a goddess that was celebrated for the family. She was often venerated in reference to families like mothers and children. And she had a temple dedicated just to her at the site of Daryl Medina. But what's interesting is during this new kingdom period in Egypt, we have zero evidence of women being called priestesses of Hathor. So through studying these tattoos, we can start to learn a little more about women's religious roles in this community. What's interesting about some of the tattoos on her neck and her shoulders, for example, is that they have two divine symbols of an eye. It's called a wajit eye. And between them, two signs of the nefer symbol, which means goodness. 
When you place these together, they create the phrase to do good. And I hypothesize that they're placed right over her voice box so that through her words, her singing, through her body, she is able to do good. And they're also placed in the top of both of her shoulders to give her these divine abilities. So in a place where women couldn't be priestesses, we actually see a lot of interesting ways that they had power in their community, but it's just not power that's documented in text. Conversely, studying ancient tattoos also tells us a lot about tattooing today. It gives us a sense of the many diverse cultures and places where tattooing existed in the past and the variety of reasons that people were tattooed. Research on ancient tattooing has demonstrated that across the world, some of the oldest human remains we find are tattooed. And it suggests that the practice of tattooing was actually very widely held and one of the oldest practices that we can see in human remains. Thank you for joining me today. And if you wanna learn more, please go to peoplingthepast.com.